Hey people, what's up? Um, so I'm here today to give you my Monday Night Raw review, and um, I'm doing. I'm gonna post this video on Tuesday. It is. It's, it's currently Monday right now, but I'm gonna publish this video on Tuesday because I figure that I'll get more views for this video on Tuesday morning than on Monday night at 12 o'clock p at 12 p.m. or a.m. I should say. So yeah, uh, be sure to check this out on Tuesday when I publish it, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. So for Raw this week, um, to start off the show, we had a WWE Championship contract signing between John Cena and Daniel Bryan, and um, it was a pretty good it was a pretty good segment. Um, also, uh, Brad Maddox was there, and there was a good promo by John Cena and by Brad Maddox. Um, the only problem with this with this segment was you didn't really get to hear Daniel Bryan at all. So um, yeah, that kind of didn't that kind of sucked. You didn't really get to hear Daniel Bryan talk. So, um, yeah, also with my review this week, I'm not going to give stars on every single segment of Raw. I'll give, like, out of five stars for some matches or some promos that I really liked. But, I mean, if it's, like, stuff I don't really care about, I'm not really going to waste my time uh, giving it stars. So I'm just letting you know. Next, we had Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. I did not care about this match. I fast-forwarded through it because I have DVR, so I just DVR'd through this match. And um, I just fast forward till the end of it, and I guess Alberto Del Rio won. And I gotta say though, Sheamus's leg, Sheamus's leg from Money in the Bank was like all black and blue and stuff. So uh, Sheamus's leg looked pretty gnarly from his injury at Money in the Bank. So um, yeah, it looks pretty gnarly, I gotta say. And one thing I want to rant on is what is the point of having Vicky Guerrero? I mean, I I found this out on Friday Night SmackDown. I didn't watch SmackDown this week. But what was the point of firing Vicky Guerrero if you're just going to make her the SmackDown GM? Honestly, you should have just kept her Raw GM. What a waste of time. I mean, why didn't they just get rid of Vicky Guerrero, let her have some vacation, have, have Booker T be the SmackDown GM? I just didn't understand that, so I just wanted to rant on that. Next, we had Christian versus Titus O'Neil, and um, Christian won. It was an okay match, but nothing really too special. Moving on. Next, we had Mark Henry do a promo, and um, and I thought Mark Henry's promo was pretty good. And the Shield came out, and the Shield came out, and Mark Henry challenged to fight him. And then Mark Henry started fighting the Shield in the ring, and then the Shield started to take over Mark Henry. When the Usos came out of nowhere, the Usos come and fight with Mark Henry against the Shield, and then the Shield retreat. Um, I thought it was an okay segment. Um, I mean. I just don't really know where this is going to lead, if they're going to have Mark Henry and the Usos versus the Shield at SummerSlam. That's probably the route they're going to go now, I'm guessing. But it was an okay segment for what it was. And, um, yeah. Next we had Dolph Ziggler versus Darren Young. And, um, Dolph Ziggler won. It was an okay match. Um, I'm glad to see the primetime players get to, um get some time on Raw, because they're not, the primetime player, the primetime players are not always on Raw, so, yeah, and then after Dolph Ziggler won, Biggie Langston and AJ tried to attack, attempted to attack Dolph Ziggler on Raw, I mean, after his match, but Dolph Ziggler managed to sneak away, so, um, yeah, I thought that was an okay segment, and then this was the dumbest segment of Raw, in my opinion, next we had Miz TV. The Miz, where he was interviewing the Divas for that Total E Diva show, it was such a waste of time. So, the Total E Divas, which are the Bell Twins, Cameron and Naomi the Funkadactyls, Natalia, Eva Marie, and JoJo. And it was a stupid segment to me. They also had Jerry Lawler in the segment, but it was just really stupid. Um... The only reason they had this was to promote their dumb show, Total E Divas. I don't even know if I'm going to watch that, to be honest. I mean, maybe just to see the Bella Twins. I'm not really sure. Although, i got to say that, that I am pretty uh, interested in some of their relation. Yeah, whatever. But, yeah. Anyway, though. Um, yeah, the only reason why they did this was to promote their show. It was, it was just a waste of Raw. I mean, they're already making commercials for this dopey show. What's the point of putting it on Raw? in a segment. But, um, Eva, Eva Marie seems to be a pretty promising diva, in my opinion. I mean, the way that she had her promo with Jerry Lawler and then she slapped him and stuff, she seems like a pretty cocky diva, and, um, 
So yeah, she looks promising, but we'll just see. Um, I don't really know though about that JoJo chick. She seems kind of crazy to me, but that's just my opinion. But um, it was it was a dumb segment. Don't even waste your time with it. Next we had Fondango versus Cody Rhodes, and um, Cody Rhodes won. Nothing really too special with that match. Also, Damian Sandow was on commentary and he tried to attack Cody Rhodes, but then Cody Rhodes won. So. Yeah, nothing really too special, but now this is where the specialness happens in Raw. Next, we had CM Punk do a promo, and um, it was a pretty good promo. I mean, whether CM Punk is a heel or a face, um, his promos are always good, in my opinion. Because, I mean, whenever CM Punk or Paul Heyman talk, you just keep your mouth shut and you listen to what they say. I mean, they're they're gold on, on TV, I think. But, um... Yeah, his promos are always good, whether he's a heel or a face, but in my opinion, though, um, his promos as a heel is better, because when he's a heel, I mean, he just is such a good bad guy for TV, I think. I mean, he just makes such a good bad guy. I mean, he, he's pretty good at, as a face, but his best segments to me was with uh, Paul Heyman when, when he was a heel, like when he was with, when he, like, when he had a rivalry with The Rock and with The Undertaker, some of the best heel work I've ever seen out of him. Also with John Cena, he did a pretty good job with John Cena and all of them. But, um, yeah, as I was saying, though, his promos are a little bit better, though, as a heel. But, um, and then also Paul Heyman came out via satellite and did a promo about Brock Lesnar and stuff. You just gotta see it. It's, it's really kind of hard to describe, but both good promos by Paul Heyman and CM Punk. I'm really interested in this storyline. I cannot wait for Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk at SummerSlam. It's gonna be epic. So, um, yeah, you just gotta check it out if, if you didn't see it. This I will give out of five stars. I will give it a three out of five stars because I thought this was, this was a good promo and segment. So uh, yeah, three out of five stars. <clears throat> Next we had Wade Barrett versus Rob Van Dam RVD, and RVD won. But it, it was an okay but short match. Um, I'm just glad to have. I'm just glad that they have Rob Van Dam back in WWE. I hope Rob Van Dam is like Chris Jericho. And he pushes the mid-card wrestlers, you know, like Chris Jericho did. Like, Chris Jericho would always sometimes lose matches just to push other superstars like Fandango, Curtis Axel. I mean, that's just to name a few. I mean, I Ryback. So, let's just hope that um, RVD lets some wrestlers beat him so that they can get a push in the mid-card. And um, I also hope that... Um, he ch I also hope that Rob Van Dam eventually challenges for the world title, whether it's the world heavyweight title or the WWE Championship. I just hope that um, Rob Van Dam in the future will be able to contend for a title, because that would be pretty badass. So, yeah. And then next, the main event. We had Daniel Bryan in a gauntlet match. So yeah, we had Daniel Bryan in a gauntlet match, and his first opponent was Daniel Bryan versus Jack Swagger. Daniel Bryan won. Pretty short match. And then, um, next, this was match of the night for me. Daniel Bryan versus Antonio Cesaro. This was the best match I've ever seen Antonio Cesaro do. Both of them were just, were just battling out back and forth, back and forth. You really have got to check out this match if you did not see it. You've got to check it out on, on YouTube. So, um, yeah, um, sorry about my ums, but yeah, Daniel Bryan versus Antonio Cesaro was an awesome match, it lasted a good 20 to 30 minutes, I, I would say, but um, Daniel Bryan won, obviously, it was a good match though, and then next we had Daniel Bryan versus Ryback, which kind of surprised me, because I heard reports online that the Big Show was supposed to return to Raw this week, so I thought that maybe they would have put the Big Show in this gauntlet match, but instead they put Ryback, which was okay, um, then we had Daniel Bryan versus Ryback, and Ryback put um, Daniel Bryan through a table. And, I mean, this was after Daniel Bryan had already wrestled three matches. So, um, it was pretty intense. Um, so, yeah, Daniel Bryan won by disqualification since that Ryback put him through a table. And um, after the match, Ryback was looking to injure Daniel Bryan, and then John Cena came out and scared Ryback away, and then John Cena... So John Cena attacked Ryback, scared Ryback, Ryback off, and then John Cena challenged Ryback to a tables match next week on Raw, so I'll maybe be looking forward to that. I don't know. I've already seen their matches before, so it may not really be much to me, but if Daniel Bryan, Daniel, if Daniel Bryan gets involved, 
that could be interesting because during this because during their contract signing, Daniel Bryan said to John Cena not to interfere in his match. So maybe Daniel Bryan will interfere in John Cena's match. But yeah, though, an awesome main event. Daniel Bryan gave it all in those three matches. And like I said, the match of the night for me was Daniel Bryan versus Antonio Cesaro. Great match. Um, awesome match. So, yeah, the main event was good. I gave it a four out of five stars. And then, as for Raw this week, um, all in all, this Raw, this, this Raw this week was okay. But for me, the only highlights were the CM Punk promo. The only highlights for me this week were the CM Punk promo and segment with Paul Heyman and the Daniel Bryan gauntlet match. The rest of the show was nothing too special to me. So sadly, I gave I get the only I mean, they got to give me more than just two highlights for Raw for me to give it a better rating. I think. So I think this was this was a pretty fair rating because Raw was nothing too special except for the CM Punk promo and the gauntlet match. And um, yeah, sorry to say this, and I, it's kind of bad of me to say. It. Well, it's not really bad; it's just my opinion. But um, for Raw this week, sadly, I gave it a five point eight out of ten stars, almost a six. But like I said, I, I just need more than two highlights to make it a good show. Um, so yeah, five point eight out of ten stars for me. And that, like I said, wasn't the big show supposed to return to Raw this week? That's what I heard on from the WWE website and from other online sources. But yeah, I hope you liked my uh, review. If you did, like my video. If you didn't, dislike my video. Comment on my video and subscribe. Peace out, guys.